going to read a little extract from my new book, Lily Alone. I filled a big bowl with cornflakes. This is our popcorn, like we're really at the cinema, I said, switching the DVD on. I settled myself in the middle of the sofa, with Baxter in the corner on one side of me, where he couldn't torment the girls. I let him hold the cornflake bowl to make him feel special. I settled Bliss and her teddy in the other corner and squeezed Pixie in beside her, cuddling her close. They all fidgeted and argued and spilled cornflakes for the first ten minutes, but then they quietened down and watched properly. It was as if the sofa itself had spread little leathery wings and flown us straight to Neverland. We didn't budge until the cast list started rolling. Again, Pixie begged, put it on again. Don't be daft, it's way past your bedtime. I looked at the clock. Quick, it's gone closing time at the Fox. Mum will be back in a minute and if she finds us all up she'll be really mad. Come on, who can get into bed first? Pixie toddled off to her little cot all by herself. It was much too small for her now, but she screamed if we tried to make her sleep on the mattress with us. She scrambled over the bars and snuggled up falling asleep as soon as her head hit her pillow. She was still wearing her Tinkerbell costume with lipstick scribble all over her face, but I couldn't be bothered to wash and change her. Baxter was much more of a challenge. Come on, Baxter, get into bed. He squared up to me, hands on his hips. Who's telling me to get into bed? You can't boss me around. You're not my mum, he shouted. He was only clowning around. I always tell him what to do, far more than mum, but he just wanted to be difficult. I had to tip him over and pull his jeans off his waving legs and then stuff him inside his duvet. He immediately got up again, duvet pulled right over his head. Baxter, lie down. I'm not Baxter, I'm the duvet monster and I'm going to smother you, Baxter growled, staggering about the bedroom. Don't be the monster. I hate that, Bliss said. She seemed the easiest of the lot. She got into her nightie and lay down on our mattress, cuddled up. But long after Baxter was sound asleep, she was still awake, snuffling into a teddy tummy. I reached out and put my arm round her. Bliss, go to sleep, I whispered. I can't, not till Mum comes back. She'll be back any minute, I said. I wasn't sure where she could have got to. It was definitely past closing time at the Fox. She'd said she'd only have a couple of drinks. I hadn't necessarily believed that, but she'd promised to be back before midnight. I lay with my arm round Bliss, my legs twined round Baxter's twitchy little feet, listening. I heard guys yelling and messing about down on the forecourt, and then a series of thumps as they chucked beer cans about. They sounded like young lads. Mum wouldn't be with them. Then I heard a couple having a screaming row, and I tensed up, but the woman's voice was too low and hoarse to be Mum's. I listened to them swearing at each other, and then the sound of a blow. Bliss tensed up. Shh, it's all right. They'll go home now, I said. Mum? She'll be back soon. I bet she's gone back to one of her friend's flats for another drink. But don't worry, she'll be fine. Back by midnight, Bliss mumbled. Yes, definitely, I said, though I, was, though I was pretty sure it was gone midnight already. When Bliss went to sleep at last, I wriggled cautiously off the mattress and padded into the kitchen. I flicked the light on. The clock showed it was ten to one. I shivered, wrapping my arms round myself. She'd promised to be back by midnight. A horrible series of images flickered in my head. I saw Mum screaming in a car, a man hurting her, Mum weeping and bleeding in a gutter, Mum lying horribly still, her eyes open, her face blank. I smacked my forehead, trying to make the images go away. I poured myself a glass of water and sipped it slowly but I'd started to shiver and the glass clinked uncomfortably against my teeth. Come home, Mum, I whispered.